All right, welcome everybody. It is Sea Shanty Night. So 2021 is the year of the Sea Shanty. Uh, earlier in the year, the Wellerman, which may or may not actually be a Sea Shanty, depending on your definition, we'll talk about that in a bit, uh, blew up on TikTok. And there's, there's kind of a unique mechanism on TikTok where you can do a duet with somebody. So if you have a recording of someone, you can duet and it'll track your voice on top of their voice, allowing you to layer your voice on top of them. And so this like, TikTok choir formed with people layering their voices on top of other voices on top of their voices on top of other voices and um, it became this worldwide phenomenon you have Elon Musk tweeting about sea shanties and things like this and um, and they're fun they're a lot of fun I've, I've done sea shanties for a long time now and it, it just it, it really tickled my heart to see them kind of blow up the way they do because sea shanties are really neat and um <clears throat> And the, there, there's a couple things that make sea shanties really neat. First of all, they're easy to learn. So uh, if you are somebody who has never done a sea shanty before, I could get you, if we were in real life, seeing a sea shanty in 10 seconds, right? Because most sea shanties are call and response, which means that the, the shanty man, in this case me, uh, would sing a verse, and then you would sing back uh, the same lyric over and over again. So it's very easy to learn. You don't have to memorize verse after verse after verse after verse. Um, the shanty man does, or shanty woman, but on sailing ships back then, it was pretty much always guys. Uh, what is a command? Here we can go with mysterious commands. Um, so the shanty man is the, the person who leads the song, and then everyone else just kind of follows along. And and so basically, I'm like, uh, all right, if we're doing South Australia, um, you're going to write back, heave away, haul away. You're going to sing back, heave away, haul away, on the, 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 after the first line I sing, and then uh, after I sing the third line... The fourth line you sing is, we're bound for South Australia. That's it. So all you have to know is, heave away, haul away, and we're bound for South Australia. That's it. And now you can all participate in a shanty. So that's reason number one why shanties are awesome. You can learn shanties very, very quickly if you go to a shanty night. It's just like, here's what you need to know. Uh, for Holloway Joe, it's like, um, Holloway Joe, like you just sing Holloway Joe, and, and that's it. You know, and then the shanty man does the different lyrics, and you just repeat back, uh, Way, haul away, we'll haul away, Joe. You just sing that. That's all you have to know. It's one line. It's really easy to learn. So shanty is really easy to learn, really easy to get into. A uh, uh, second reason why they're really awesome is that you don't have to be a very good singer. So it, it's it's with a lot of amusement that I watch like these acapella groups doing um, uh, Blow the Man Down or uh, What Would You Do With a Drunken Sailor? And they're, they're like layering all these like harmonies and like... Uh, all these like fancy, woo, you know, kinds of things on it. And man, they're not supposed to be sung that way. I mean, you can do it that way and it sounds cool, but like uh, sea shanties were sung by sailors with no vocal training, right? Like, um, you know, basically it's just a bunch of people that are enthusiastically just singing along. You don't have to be in key. Uh, nobody gets mad if you take a breath at the wrong time. It is a very democratic, uh, for the people, populist uh, singing modality and uh, what's really neat about it is that um, it really wasn't even um, considered like an art form almost like it, it it had almost no notice from like the rest of the world so on sailing vessels sailors would sing shanties and then when they got to shore they didn't <clears throat> it was for the boats it was work songs that's why the title of the presentation is work songs a, a sea shanty is a work song that you sing while you're working on a boat. And um, there, there's different ways that people have tried categorizing sea shanties. And let's be honest here, this isn't an academic discipline, like it's not, or it's not an academic term, right? Like the, the shanty is probably just from the French word chante to sing. And so it just, it really means just a sea song. Sea shanty is just a sea song. And so our songs about the sea, sea shanties are, <clears throat> are uh, songs sung on the sea about the sea but not while you're working are those sea shanties eh. you know I, I personally don't really care you know the um, uh, I, I have a fairly expansive attitude towards it and, and even things like the pirate songs pirate songs and sea shanties are completely different um, you know the golden age of piracy was like the 1600s and the 1700s and sea shanties were work songs from the 17 and 1800s and there's a little bit of overlap but uh, basically you know we're Sea shanties were sung by merchant marine. You like like work sailors on 
work vessels, not naval vessels, not pirate vessels. There are some songs that would have been from naval vessels and stuff like that. More or less, the, the British Navy didn't allow singing on their ships. So it's, con it's considered undignified. But on work vessels, it was it was mandatory. Gonzalez is now muted. Okay, um, uh, you, you would be hired if you could sing, right? Like one of the one of the things that they would hire people for is the quality of their singing voice. You know, like do you know the songs? Yeah, I know the songs. All right, you're hired. You know, and it was good to be the shanty man because the shanty man didn't have to work. Uh, while you're like while everyone's working, the shanty man will just sit there and call out the verses, and everyone else is who's doing the work is like responding to him. But the shanty man could just sit there and sing, and so it was a, it was a nice position to have. And drink. Now you know it's 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 an interesting thing. Like we, we think of these things as like drinking songs, eh, you know, maybe, maybe. Like I said, like I have a fairly broad, um, I have a fairly broad definition of sea shanties. Like to me, if if people are hanging around in the forecastle, you know, where the enlisted men, so to speak, or the the common sailors would hang out in a common room, if they're sitting around singing and and drinking. I would call that a sea shanty. I don't care that they're not working at the time. But some people do take a more strict definition towards sea shanties and only count sea shanties that are sung while you're working, while you're pulling on a rope, while you're turning a capstan, and all this kind of stuff that we're going to talk about today. So the definition is, you know, fairly vague. And again, it's not like the sailors had some sort of academic definition. They just called them shanties. They're songs, you know. And so sea shanties are songs about the sea, on the sea, something like that. Sea shanty elitist, right? So, we're going to learn some history, we're going to learn some music, uh, we're going to sing, or maybe not. I'll probably just end up playing music videos. I don't think Discord's going to work for this, unfortunately. So, um, yeah, so shanties were uh, songs by working sailors, like people that are hauling on ropes and all this kind of stuff. Um, none of, no sea shanties are really that old. Um, you know, they might be 200 years old. Um, Probably there's not many from before that. The uh, the 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 thing is, like I said, like they didn't really talk about it on shore. In fact, a lot of them considered it bad luck to sing a sea shanty on shore because you're not supposed to do that. It's you know like that's not the right place for it. When you're leaving on a boat, you sing an outgoing song about sing singing songs about the sea and the weather and stuff like that. And when you're coming back, you sing uh, homeward bound songs like Lever Johnny Lever. Um, uh, Dana two years before the mask and so one of the earliest references we have to see shanties is from this book by Richard Henry Dana uh, who Dana Point in San Diego is named after uh, he wrote a book called Two Years Before the Mast <clears throat> and uh, he was uh, he was at Harvard and he decided eh, academics and so he decided to just take off and join a boat and go to the other side of, of America you know which wasn't even part of America at the time it was part of Spain uh, as part of uh, Alto, California, you know, the uh, part of Spain that extended up into San Francisco. And um, he worked on a ship, and we used to, like, I always used to think that um, ships would have, like, hundreds of people on it. Like, if you ever saw, like, Master and Commander or any of these big uh, British ships of the line, they would have, like, all these people on it. His ship was, like, five people and the captain. <laughs> like, you know, and they had to run this whole, they had to run this whole ship themselves. And so all of those sails... Do you see there? Somebody's got to pull those sails up. You know, you got to you got to get everybody together, and you got to pull on the ropes together, and get those sails up, and take the sails down, and 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 luff and trim and and rope. You know, you have to. There's all like sailing ships are one of the most complicated machines I've ever seen in my life, and um, there's a lot of ropes to control the angle of the 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 mast and how much wind you allow in, and uh, if you want to keep it from. Uh, Having the like, if you're close hauled, which means you're sailing close towards the wind, then you need to uh, make sure that the wind doesn't catch in the sail and blow you backwards. And and so sailors are constantly adjusting the ropes to catch the maximum amount of wind without capsizing. In, in a storm, you reduce the amount of wind that you capture, right? And so you got five people on a boat like that trying to not die, right? You're, you're going around um, uh, one of the most dangerous crossings in the world. And you got five people, and there's ice, and like, uh, I, th I think actually one of the guys fell overboard and died. Uh, so if you were if you were to go from Harvard, um, you're in Harvard, and then you sail around this way, and sail down this way, and down this way, and around South America, and you get to here. This area right here is 
bad. This this is a really rough crossing here. Uh, the seas are high. The wind's blowing the wrong way. The winds blow this way. Um, it's a tough crossing. And like the uh, the immunity on the bounty, uh, if you guys ever heard of that, was caused in part because they tried sailing against the wind here for months and months and months, and they couldn't get across uh, the the cape. And so. Um, and so they ended up sailing this way. They ended up sailing all the way around the world in the opposite direction to deliver their breadfruit. And, and that's one of the reasons why the people mutinied was because they couldn't get around the Cape. And uh, <clears throat> Kearney has sailed the sea. <laughs> uh, I've been on cruises. Does that count? <laughs> so uh, Cape Horn is, uh, uh, that's, that's the end of South America there. And um, it, uh, the waters are particularly hazardous. Um, it's still considered uh, very, very dangerous to, uh, to go these days. And there's a Coast Guard presence there at all times. And so, um, yeah, like South, uh, so Australia, or Australia, Antarctica is actually this close, right, to Cape Horn. And even though people were crossing Cape Horn for hundreds of years, like people didn't actually discover Antarctica because the crossing was so difficult. They wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. Even though on a clear day, you could probably even see the land down here. Like, nobody actually discovered Antarctica for centuries because this crossing was so difficult. And so what the sea shanties, how these things come in, and, and he has evidence for sea shanties, and he talks about sea shanties in Two Years Before the Mast, where sea shanties come in... Wow, that was loud. Uh, where uh, Yui is muted. Uh, where sea shanties come in is uh, they synchronize your work they synchronize your work so everybody can yank on the rope at the same time to overcome the friction. And it also fires the guys up. So uh, Richard Henry Dana talks about how they had certain sea shanties that every time they sang them, everyone just got pumped up and they worked extra hard. And the trouble is he didn't include any music for it or any lyrics. So he just listed off the names of the sea shanties that he liked with no sheet music or lyrics. And so it's like, all right, cool. What song were you singing, dude? Like, come on, you know? And so later, later, later on, um, <clears throat> towards the end of the Age of Sail, because, you know, steamships and things like that started coming on around the 1850s and later, and the Age of Sail started vanishing, you had a, a few people still on sailing vessels in the 20th century. And so some of them decided in the early 1900s to start writing down the sea shanties so they wouldn't be lost. But, I mean, there, there's all these sea shanties we know the names of that we have no idea what they sound like. We have no idea what the lyrics are. We have no idea what the music was. And for the, for the songs that we do have the lyrics for, a lot of them have been uh, boulderized, which means um, uh, sanitized for public consumption. So the versions of sea shanties that we sing and you have choirs singing, hey, 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 blow the man down, um, have been cleaned up so that kids can listen to them. Because the sailors were... You know, not very uh, clean-tongued. You know, uh, <clears throat> they uh, they uh, a lot of the lyrics were a lot of the lyrics were uh, not polite or not um, uh, politically correct. And so Stan Hugel, who is the guy who wrote the definitive book on um, <clears throat> sea shanties, he he was actually he was considered the last shanty man, and uh, I believe he actually got sea wrecked and, and everything. But he was actually a shantyman on a sailing vessel, and when he was old, and this, you can see this is 1956, 1957, uh, he started, um, he wrote this Sea Shanties of the Seven Seas, uh, this one, Shanties from the Seven Seas, and so he, he wrote down 400 Sea Shanties. So this book here is the definitive book on Sea Shanties. Like, if you are at all interested in Sea Shanties, this is the book. And, and really, it's almost the only book you need to read. Almost. Because he's the guy, right? He, you know, who preserved 400 songs and he writes about the history of them and all this kind of stuff. The only downside is he boulderized it. He he cleaned up the lyrics. So uh, at some of the workshops that he gave, he lived until the 80s, I believe, 1980s. He uh, he would sometimes talk about the, the real lyrics uh, behind the sea shanties. So um, not comprehensive if sanitized. <laughs> That's funny. One star. He sanitized the lyrics, uh, but you can you can find the uh, the the dirty lyrics sometimes, um, in uh, 
in these these songs here. Um, uh, penis, there you go, right? Brown, act of sodomy, horn, erect penis. Yeah, so there you 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 can uh, you can find the the dirty version out there if that's your cup of tea for this uh, workshop. I I guess I'll stick to the the clean versions. Although you could probably um, you could probably uh, guess you know, uh, what some of the lyrics might have originally said. Um, there are some, there are some sea shanties that have survived from the Middle Ages, but none of them have any music. And in fact, the oldest sea shanties are actually from Roman times. There's actually two sea shanties from uh, Rome uh, in Latin that was used to get people to row faster on the triremes and quadremes and things like that. But there's no music and it's only a couple lines, but it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. They've been around for a long time. And so the point of a sea shanty is to get people synchronized, working together, and fired up. Okay. Uh, my lips are not in sync with the audio. Hello? Hello? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, well, either way. So, I'll just cover my mouth then. Um, yeah, I guess, I don't know, we'll, we'll try singing, but... Um, so Drunken Sailor is the most famous sea shanty. Five second delay, that's brutal. Um, hmm, hmm. Discord's live video isn't that great. I can hear you more amused than anything. Oh, okay. Um, so Drunken Sailor is, um, I'll play it in a bit, but it's, it's a Halyard song. And so halyard song is one in which you um, haul on a yard. <laughs> what is a yard? Uh, what is a yard? Uh, yard sailing. So the yard is that piece of wood you see there, right there. Uh, and so these things oftentimes can slide up and down. And so if you're in a raise at that yard, that takes a lot of work. You got, you got ropes attached to it, and you're going to be you're gonna have a bunch of people yanking on it to lift that yard up. And uh, in order to get it moving and overcoming friction, you're gonna to have to have everybody yank at the same time. <clears throat> so, uh, he's wearing Adidas. Yeah, these are obviously kids. Uh, what, is, what is the Prince William? Tall Ships Youth Trust. Yeah, it's a, it's a, to teach kids about sailing and stuff like that. So, um, so a halyard song, and, and it's also used for pulling on any kind of rope. So when everybody's pulling together, what you'll have is, um, you'll have, like when you listen to these songs, there's gonna be beats in the song where everybody pulls. Okay. Way, hey, roll and go. Right, something like that. Uh, when there's a big downbeat, everyone yanks together. What would you do with a drunken sailor? What would you do with a drunken sailor? What would you do with a drunk... Right? That downbeat, that big downbeat is when people pull. And if you hear it, there's actually a lot of time between each of those pulls. And that's because it's a big, heavy yard and everybody needs to pull together. So you save your strength, work your hands forward on the rope. What would you do with a drunken sailor? What? Would you do with a drunken sailor? What would you do with a drunken sailor? Early in the morning. Way, hey, up she rises. Way, hey, up she rises. Right? You're talking about the yard. Or the sails, if that's what they're lifting on. And so it's uh, it's a way of getting a bunch of people to pull together. It's a halyard, halyard song. Okay. So uh, the beat is giving you SpongeBob flat. Yeah. There's always, uh, not always, uh, uh, Forecastle songs don't necessarily have a strong beat, but Halyard, uh, Long Haul, Short Haul, Capstan, and Pump songs all have a very noticeable beat, and that's one of the cool things about shanties. Uh, does it seem a bit delay? Uh, yeah, sorry. Um, so uh, so I, I'll, play, I'll play Drunken Sailor for you guys. Um, we'll just do it that way. And... Uh, and but when you're when you're listening to it, just see if you can hear that beat when everybody's gonna yank all together. Okay. Switch the. Uh... Hey. Whoa. All right. It's like that compression of your um, diaphragm, right? Because you're you know pulling like that. 
That's the sound you make. You don't go, la, 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 and pull, right? That's not. <laughs> and pull, la, 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 la. No, no. <laughs> Let's do this, and then I have to switch. I need to switch the screen over here. Yeah, hit that soprano high note. That's what always just cracks me up when I hear, like, acapella groups doing it. What would you do? What would you do? What would you do? You know, and they're all just like, no, everyone's supposed to be together, you know, because you're all yoink, yoinking on this thing together, you know. All the people should be going, you know, all at the same time. And they're like, no, 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 you know. It just, it, it cracks me up. I'm a lover, not a hater, but it's still funny. Okay, so here we got Drunken Sailor by the uh, Irish Rovers. Uh, the Irish Rover actually being a sea song of some sort. It's an Irish song about the sea, so it's a sea song. Okay. Let me, uh, let me know if you guys can hear this. Yeah, so that, that would not be how they sing the song, right? See how fast they were going? Mm -mm. <laughs> that, is, that is not how you'd be singing it. Um, let's see, let's do but the longest John's have one. Uh, David Coffin. David Coffin is my favorite shantyman. Uh, let's see here, Drunken Sailor. I'm not sure it's around this one. So you hear you can hear how the people were harmonizing there. Yeah, probably not. Probably not going to be harmonizing like that. Uh, <clears throat> uh, would they have an instrument or drum, perhaps? Uh, yeah, they would have uh, tin whistles, uh, sometimes violins. Uh, there's illustrations of people playing violins on deck. A lot of times, though, they stomp, and so uh, you'll sometimes hear of stomp, stamp and go shanties because when the guys walk, they stamp their feet. And so you saw there, everybody's clapping, right, in time with the music. You couldn't do that while pulling on a rope, but you can stamp, right? And so uh, sea shanties can be whatever I want. <laughs> nice. Perfect. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, spoons. Spoons were a thing. You could click spoons together. Literally just spoons. But I actually have professionally made spoons that you can tap together. You can play them on your leg and stuff like that. It's kind of cool. Um, so... Um, so that is Drunken Sailor. And uh, the thing is, like, the, what's the right version of Drunken Sailor, right? Shave his belly with a rusty razor. What's the right lyric? There is no right lyric, right? That's, uh, you know, if you search for Drunken Sailor lyrics, <clears throat> uh, there is no right answer, right? Because what happens is it's whatever the Shannon Man just felt like calling out at the time. There's no... There's no definitive first verse and second verse. It's whatever, whatever amuses you, you know? So, uh, Shave is Billy the Rusty Razor. Yeah. Oh, it's the exact same one, isn't it? Okay. Um, great. Put him in the hold of Captain's Daughter, which is the Cat of Nine Tails, right? And so there's, you know, if you, if you, like, you heard that performance there, they didn't say Shave is Billy the Rusty Razor. They said, put him in a boat and make him bail it, you know, or whatever. Yeah, those are the spoons right there. So the uh, um, early in the morning. Uh, yeah, so uh, early in the morning. Early. 
Yeah, it sounds better probably that way. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, it's all ad libbed. It's all it's all just whatever you feel like, you know, and 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 it's just it's fun, right? And so if uh, if you're worried that somebody's going to get offended if you say put him in bed with the captain's daughter because people think it's an actual girl, there usually wouldn't be girls on the boats. It, the captain's daughter is the cat of nine tails, probably, um, or it could be, you know, a ribald verse, one or the other. Then you just leave it out. You know, it's just, you, you just got to know your, uh, um, see, this, this is completely different, right? Yeah. It's just whatever, you know, whatever you feel like. Okay. Uh, and, and then they're walking as they're pulling on the rope. So that's called a long haul or a halyard song because you're pulling, you're pulling a rope a big distance up the pole. Now, uh, your kids are not seeing it. Cool. Uh, so this is what it looks like. Okay, so you got all these people, they're on, they got this rope here. I believe this is a Navy vessel. So the USS Navy keeps um, a tall ship, I think the Constitution, under, uh, a, it's actually an active service, and so they'll have Navy guys trained in sailing ships, which is kind of cool. Um, so these are Navy guys. If you, if you ever want to experience a, a sailing ship, there's a couple places not nearby because we're in Fresno, but there's some places. So there's the San Francisco Maritime Museum. I've been there a few times. Maritime, Maritime. National History Park. And so you can learn all about the age of sail and how to sail a vessel. And they have they have several vessels they take out. And so if you want to, um, if you want to, you know, learn how to, you know, sail a square rigged ship like three masted square rigged ship you can do so it was built in 1886 and um <clears throat> one of the interesting one of the interesting things about san francisco is that there were a lot of ships abandoned in san francisco so san francisco downtown is actually built on ships um people would come to san francisco during the gold rush and the sailors would jump off and not want to sail back and so the captain's like dudes come on and he couldn't find sailing like sailors to sail the vessel back. So, for example, the uh, Niantic. If you guys have ever played uh, Pokemon Go, uh, Niantic, Niantic, um, or uh, Ingress, um, <clears throat> the Niantic was a division of Google that did uh, augmented reality games. Uh, it's named after the Niantic, a, a boat, um, which was beached in San Francisco. It was abandoned. And um, and so they ran it aground and they converted it into a hotel. And so they, they needed buildings in San Francisco, so they just put it up on the shore and and uh, and turned it into a hotel. And it was actually considered a, quite a nice hotel for a number of years. And uh, when they built the um, Transamerica Pyramid, uh, this iconic uh, building in San Francisco, they dug up the Niantic and they found they actually found. Um, because it was the hotel at that point. They found bottles of champagne and stuff like that. They found the, the log, the captain's log from the Niantic. Uh, and so um, there's a bunch of vessels in San Francisco, in like downtown San Francisco right there. And um, and so Niantic was named after um, Nantucket. It was a slang term for Nantucket in Massachusetts. Probably. Right. So this part of that island off the coast of Massachusetts. There. So, anyhow. So uh, yeah. So if you wanna if you wanna go experience life on a sailing vessel, the San Francisco Maritime Museum probably closed right now, but hopefully will open up once coronavirus is over. Uh, it's a good place to learn. Uh, also, I've been to the San Diego Maritime Museum. <clears throat> in San Diego and they have the vessel from the uh, Master and Commander movie there. If you guys have never seen Master and Commander, um, I've seen it probably four or five times because my wife loves the movie. Okay. Um, it is, uh, it's a really good movie and uh, it's, it's very much Age of Sail. It was written, it was adapted from a book um, that was very accurate in terms of uh, nautical jargon and tactics and things like that. And so Quite a good movie, and so if you're if you're into sea shanties, I believe they have uh, 
uh, Spanish ladies in it, I think, is in, in the, is in that one. Great soundtrack as well. So if you're into Age of Sail stuff, you can check that out. And the boat from that is at the San Diego Maritime Harbor. The uh, the surprise, the HMS surprise, is that the boat from the movie is there, and it sails. And so if you want, you can join the crew of the HMS surprise and um, and learn to sail it. And they'll teach you how to sail it. It's kind of cool. It's kind of neat. Um, Sacramento's built on... Yeah, because of the flood and the mudslide. and Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of cool. So... Uh, uh, so here, here you got guys uh, pulling on a rope, and uh, and so these the, the two guys over on over here on the right, they're actually jumping the rope. So they're actually going to leap up, grab the rope, and use their body weight to pull slack out. And then these people are going to haul together. And so you're going to have uh, possibly you can have two different beats: one for the person jumping to pull out some slack, and another for the people to pull. Or maybe they do it all together. I don't know. So. Uh, so you do that to get out every last ounce of performance out of a sailing vessel. If you got slack when there shouldn't be slack, then um, then your ship is not going to perform at the speed that it needs. And so um, basically, you know, I've heard there's a rule that anytime sailors are pulling on a rope, they're going to be singing. Like it's just, uh, you know, every time they pull on a rope, somebody starts calling out a shanty. And the thing is like these these songs aren't really that long, right? Like if all you're doing is pulling out a little bit of slack, then um, it doesn't need to be like 30 verses or whatever, right? You just, a couple of verses and you're done. So here is a, here is a, a sail plan uh, and a rigging diagram for a, a three-masted ship. And so this will give you an idea of the amount of complexity uh, that it takes to actually sail one of these vessels. It is crazy complicated, right? How many people were there for the average crew? So on a, on a man of war, um, you could have a lot. Like, um, uh, what was the Mary Rose? Uh, that was the one that sank. Uh, so this was uh, a British vessel that sank, I believe in the channel, right? Uh, uh, where did it sink? Where did it sink? Ah, it was caught in a gust of wind and uh, turned over. Water came in through the gun ports and it sank. Okay. And so anyhow, so they, they raised it in the 80s. And and so it's it's one of the best sources of archaeology because they actually had, it was a warship. And so uh, we, we have very few cases of longbows, you know, like you, the British longbow. Um, it's very famous in British history. Like pretty much none of them survived, but there were a bunch of them in the whole in the hold of the uh, Mary Rose. We know how big the longbows were and how thick they were and how much draw they had and stuff like that. So this was Henry VIII's boat. And uh, and it sank. And there you go. So how many... Okay. So it had 200 sailors, to answer your question, Jazz. You had 200 sailors, 185 soldiers, and 30 gunners. So this was a warship. And so this had hundreds of people on it. Right, so you have 200 people just to run the ship, and then you've got another 200 people to fight. And so these would be Marines, these would be deck gunners, things like that. Uh, the Vasa, if you guys ever get a chance to go to Stockholm, Stockholm is amazing <clears throat> in the summer. <laughs> it's amazing. The uh, <clears throat> Stockholm has the Vasa Museum, and this is another flagship that sunk uh, due to water coming in through its gun ports. Uh, they took it out for its maiden voyage. A gust of wind came up. It tipped over, water came in through the gun ports, and it sank within, like, minutes of it launching. Here's our brand new, massively, incredibly expensive warship. It goes out, bloop, 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 bloop. That's it. And so they raised it uh, a few decades ago, and they brought it into Stockholm, and they built this museum around it. So they actually built the museum around it, and there's a hole in the ceiling for the mast to go up. Uh, it's an incredible, incredible warship. And you can see... Um, There's Stockholm right there. Uh, you can see it has these galleries here, these covered galleries for people to shoot guns out of. So it was like, um, this is what it would have looked like originally. So you can see it has these galleries around the front, around the back. One of the reasons why it sank was it was too heavy. It wasn't wide enough and it was very top heavy because of all the additions the king wanted put on. And so what you could do here is put gunners, like soldiers, in these galleries here and they could shoot out without getting shot in return. Kind of cool stuff. And so, um, 
yeah, cool stuff. It's really neat. And so if you're ever in, if you're ever in, uh, if you're ever in Stockholm, like you got, you got to see the bass. It's pretty, pretty damn cool. So um, that gives you the idea. But also to answer your question, Jazz, in master or not master and commander, in two years before the mast, uh, it's like the captain, the first mate, and like five guys. Like I, I don't remember the exact number, but it was like seven people to run an entire ship. And it wasn't like a, a big, a big ship. But it was, I think, a two-masted brig was the one that they. That uh, Richard Henry Dana. He was on a brig. Yeah, that's that's the kind of boat that he's on. And you can see you can see how many ropes there are still on that rope. Or how many ropes are still on that that vessel, right? Like there's still a lot of ropes. It's a two-masted square-rigged uh, brig. And, it, you know, it was designed to haul um, cattle hides. It was designed to haul, haul cattle hides. And so you just had five people to run this whole thing. And you would have to climb, you'd have to climb up here. Um, let's see if I can zoom in. You can see there's these, uh, there's rat lines that go up and like uh, there, you can see the rat lines. And so you'd climb up and you would have to mess with the sails up there. And if you're, if you're messing with those sails, like, um, in a in a storm like the, the ship's tipping this way and that way and you're like up there like messing with the sails like it is um uh not you know and, and there's not a lot of safety harnesses and stuff like um i mean that's that's what you're doing right <laughs> You don't have like a safety harness you're clipped in or anything. You're just standing on a rope or two ropes like that. Um, and you're sitting there yanking on these, yanking on these sails. Uh, and that's what we'll talk about next, the short haul. is like when you when you got the, the, the sails up like this, you need to really pull them tight. And so what'll happen is that there'll be a, a, a sail wrapped around that yard there. And you'll have a bunch of guys on these Flemish horses and they're not attached to anything. And you got to all pull together and yank on the sheet up as hard as you can and then wrap it around to pull all the slack out of the sail. And, you, you know, you got to walk out there. I mean, look at that. Like, you got to, you know, you got to climb out on the end of the yard there. And um, um, and there, there could be, like, you know, a bunch of guys on it as well. So this is this is your view while you're working, you know. So you climb up a, a ladder, a rope ladder, and then you got to walk out on that rope there and pull on, pull on the sheets, you know. How fun is that? Hmm? It's a fun, fun lifetime right there. <laughs> that's, that's your, uh, that's your uh, standing area there. Yeah. And then the Flemish horse is the little loop at the end there. And you're, you're pulling on the, and imagine you're in 20 foot waves and the ship is going like this, you know. Ooh. 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 <laughs> yeah, that's a, I got a video of it actually. Let's see here. Let's see, date modified. Where did I put that? Oh, where did I put it? Hmm. I have a video of people on on the yards like that while the seas are high. Now, <clears throat> you can use your imagination. It's pretty pretty brutal. So anyhow, so that would be a, a short haul song. And so a short haul song is where uh, you got people up in the rigging like that, and they all have to pull on the the rope together. And so these these songs are very short. Like um, the the number of verses are usually like pretty pretty minimal. Um, two verses and you're, you're done you know so where did I where did I put that video no oh, it's not a big deal I guess hmm. 
Mm. I don't know. I saved it for this workshop. Can't find it now. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, I can probably look at it later. All right. Uh, so anyway, so a, uh, you know, there's all sorts of terminology for... Um, there's all sorts of terminology for these things. Um, uh, spars, leeches, clues, lifts, all your... Yeah, um, a lot of ropes. And, and all of these ropes are important. You know, they all do different things. So you can do things like adjust the angle. You can adjust how much wind it catches. Um, you can uh, uh, roll them up. There's all sorts of things. So uh, a short haul is used for putting the sails away and really tucking them tight. And so um, it takes a lot of force to get, like imagine you're wrapping a, a blanket around a log, right? And you need to pull all of the, uh, the slack out. There's a lot of friction. Like if you got that blanket wrapped up like five times, you're trying to pull on it. So you got a bunch of guys all out there on the yards, all yoinking at the same time. And so, uh, yeah, see these people have harnesses. Look at this, look at this, look at this guy. Now imagine in the age of sail doing this without the safety harness. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're going up the rat lines and, and you have to get up like you're, you're, act, you're actually inverted, like with your back facing towards the ocean. You know what I mean? And that's just, uh, you know, that's just your day at the office, you know? So, okay. Yeah, look at all that terminology. Okay, fun times. All right. So uh, let's do... Patty Doyle's boots is the hull. Of the bowline is pretty famous too. Let's do Patty Doyle's boots. Hmm. Yeah, Assassin's Creed. Hmm. Clancy Brothers is probably not going to be. Very accurate. Come away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty good. So uh, Clancy Brothers were a popular Irish trad group in the uh, 1960s. And so they did they did some sea shanties as well. And so uh, what you're going to hear is a person, this shanty man's going to call out, Way, hey, hey, and we'll all to and gin. And, and on that final downbeat, it's a massive burst of effort. Way. Yeah. Uh, that would that would be it. Just a couple of verses, and they would do it two or three times, and they're done. <laughs> so uh, trad songs, like uh, because there's so many different variations, and you'll find different snippets of variations. People are like, oh, that's how they sing it, and, and they would take all these lyrics and put them together. So when they're making like an album. They'll you know you can't just have a track that's 30 seconds long, and so they'll just keep adding more more lyrics to it. Uh, my favorite short haul is called uh, Holloway Joe. Um, will the shanty man join the workforce or chant from the crown nest? Uh, he he will be nearby, but he's not doing the work. So it's good to be good to be the shanty man. So uh, Holloway Joe is uh, one of my favorite um, short haul songs, and uh, and it goes uh, when I uh, let's see when I was a young man. Or so me father told me, Timmy, way, haul away, we'll haul away, Joe. And the Joe is when they all yank. That if I did not kiss the girls, me lips would all grow moldy, Timmy, way, haul away, we'll haul away, Joe. And so the uh, the sailors, all they have to do is say, way, haul away, we'll haul away, Joe. You know, and uh, King Louis was the king of France before the revolution. Way, haul away, we'll haul away, Joe. But then he got his head chopped off, it spoiled his constitution. Way, haul away, we'll haul away, Joe. And so uh, it's, you know, and you can keep going if you want. Like, some versions have 30 verses to them, but that's, you know, usually about it. <laughs> that's it. You know, you, you can you call your friends. Sure, go for it, girl. Ada, what's your favorite sea shanty? So many good ones. What a good answer. Fantastic answer. 
Yeah, it's like a cadence. And so one of my friends uh, came to one of my sea shanty nights, and he's like, he was in the military, and and so cadences are are similar to that. Like uh, you're running though. Usually you'll hear running, and and you call out, you know, and, and people call back. It's the like same call and response kind of thing. So um, yeah, I do I do sea shanties uh, as part of the SCA. I'm a member of the SCA, I guess technically, even though the coronavirus has kind of put everything on hold. The Society Society for Creative Anachronism is a cool organization, and uh, there's a lot of different elements to the SCA. Uh, some people get involved in like the drama, and they like reenact court scenes and things like that. Uh, a lot of people do. Oh, that. <laughs> uh, so fighting, you know, that guy's got a shield right there in his face. Uh, probably shouldn't be doing that. It's probably illegal. Um, they do archery, they do fighting, they do feasting, uh, parades, stuff like that. Um, personally, I do it for this kind of stuff. I like field battles. They're a lot of fun. You put on armor and you go and hit people with sticks. It's, it's, it's really a lot of fun. Um, but also for the music. And so they will typically at nighttime have uh, a lot of bonfires and music and partying and stuff like that. And so you can find a, a group of people that uh, are into that kind of stuff and um, there are much better musicians than me but it doesn't matter because it's sea shanties who cares if you suck <laughs> all you need is enthusiasm right and when you have a bunch of people drunk singing together and uh, it's just a really good time it's just a, a really fantastic time you just got a bunch of people and everyone's off key and singing enthusiastically and they're pumped to be there and it's just a it's just a really neat um, really neat experience. Uh, there's some pretty dirty cadences. You're not allowed to sing anymore either. Yeah, yeah, same same idea. And so, um, yeah, Holloway Joe is a is a short haul song. Uh, so, a capstan song. Uh, this is called the capstan, and they still have them. Is anyone here in the Navy or been in the Navy? Army. Army's not in the Navy, dude. Doesn't count. <laughs> Marines, I'll take the Marines too. You know how to swim. <laughs> so Debello, they still have capstans, right? On the on the uh, ships. They're not usually they're not usually human powered. So uh, one of the big changes in sealing vessels was when they got these things called steam mules, in other words, a steam engine, uh, they would use the steam mules to turn the capstan instead of the people. And so what, what is, what is this thing here attached to? Well, a capstan is usually what's used to raise the anchor. So if you got this big heavy ass anchor down in the ocean, uh, it's how you put the parking brake on your, your ship, you know, uh, you need to get it up so you can get going again. And so what you'll do is you'll get uh, a bunch of people, and they have these uh, things here called pawls, P-A-W-L, and they fit into the holes in the capstan. And you, you get your paw and you stick it into the hole. And then what happens is the shantyman, sometimes the shantyman would actually sit on the thing, and then he, he just sits there and rotates around as you're you know, pushing. And what you do is you stomp together, you stamp your feet, stamp your feet, and you push. And you turn this capstan in a big circle. And, um, and what that does is it winds the rope up, and so it pulls the anchor up. And so, um, capstan, 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 heave with a will, way, hey, roll and go. Our boots and our clothes, boys, are all in the pond. To me, rollicking randy dandy -o. So that's what you do. You have to make sure you don't trip over the thing either. That's, that's the other trick of it. So you go around and around in a circle, and the shantyman will call out the shanty until the winding's done, until you've until you're done uh, pulling the pulling the anchor up. And so, um, I don't know if that thing's actually attached to anything, is it? <laughs> it doesn't look like it is. And so you can see that they got their paws and they just stick them in the holes there and they, they turn them. Um, okay. So, uh, and then they had steam, steam ones as well. So, yeah, and so a capstan song, <clears throat> when they dock a ship, do they have to drop an anchor? They'll typically tie off, um, or you, you, um, 
um, if you're at a place where there's like dangerous, like the water's going up and down like that, and they might smash your boat into the dock, they'll put out to sea and then anchor. It, it depends. If you have a safe harbor, though, then they pull up to the dock and they tie off. And so the dock, it, like have you ever seen like the tires attached to the sides of ships? That's to keep them from bumping up against the uh, the dock, and then they just have a um, You ever seen these things, the cleats? And so you just pull your boat up and you just kind of just go over and under and around and the friction on the on the rope actually holds it in place. And so, um, yep. So you just basically tie your boat off and, but if it, if it gets really rough, then they'll, they'll have to put out to sea and you gotta worry about tides and all that kind of stuff too, if it's, if you're gonna be there for a while. So, um, so caps and songs have a different cadence than um, than a long or a short haul. Like a long haul, you'll, you'll hear way, hey, yep, she rises, way, hey, yep, she. Um, and so that beat is kind of like... In a short haul, it's like one big pull, and then you got like six or seven seconds of resting, and then one big pull again. A caps and song, it sounds like a march. So everyone's just stepping in time like that. Now we are ready to head for the horn. Way, hey, roll and go. Our boots and our clothes, boys, are all in the pond. To me, rollick and randy dandy o. Heave a paw, heave away. Way, hey, roll and go. Yep. So that's uh, the anchors on board and the cables also. And so there, there's that regular beat to the to the song. And that's as you're stamping in time to it. Is the point of the captain's song to match steps? Yeah, so everyone's stepping at exactly the same rate, right? And so they're all synchronized. The whole point of these work songs is to synchronize the effort and to get people fired up. And uh, as you can imagine, Randy Dandio probably has some, some dirty lyrics, um, but not in the versions that you'll, you'll find in, in the books. Um, uh, now we are warping her out through the locks. Way, hey, roll and go. Where the pretty young girls all come down in their frocks. A frock being a jacket. To me, Rollick and Randy Dandio. So that's about as dirty as it gets. Girls coming down to watch the sailors in their coats. They're scandalous, I know. Keep your kids out of here. Okay. Um, frock sounds filthy, but it's not. It's a jacket. <laughs> Or the pretty young girls all come down in their frocks. That's it. And so, uh, 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 yeah, Randy Dandy is a capstan song. It's my favorite, uh, probably maybe my favorite sea shanty ever. And uh, it's uh, about, it's a uh, uh, outgoing song. So it's a song that you're singing when you're leaving harbor. And so uh, Randy Dandy is about sailors who are leaving probably London, maybe, let's say, on their way around the horn. And so... Um, they're uh, uh, they're raising the anchor and they're they're gonna they're gonna go, and so this would be sung you know as you're going out. You wouldn't sing it on the way back because the song talks about uh, now we are headed to Valdepo Bay. Way hey roll and go. Tis a hill uh, get cracking me lads. Tis a hill of a way to me rollicking Randy Dandido uh, Randio. So Valdepo Bay is in Chile. It's an island off the coast of Chile. There used to be a prison there and stuff. Um, so it'd be a song you're singing as you're raising anchor to depart. And so imagining girls coming down to see the sailors and waving them away and um, take your hands out of your pockets and don't suck your thumbs and all this kind of stuff. Uh, how long is this workshop? It's until 5.30. Until 5.30. So um, that's, that's, a, that's a capstan right there. That's a, a big-ass capstan. You can see a lot of people pushing on it at the same time to raise the anchor. Okay, so it could last days, I know. And so uh, there's another kind of sea shanty called a four biter or a forecastle song. Um, and and these songs were sung. They were not. They were not forecastle or a foxhole song. Foxhole song. Um, 
so Foxhole songs or Forecastle songs or Four Biters, um, they were sung after your workday was over. And so the, uh, the front of the ship was where the sailors would hang out and sleep and stuff like that. And so there are a number of songs and they don't have that same, Hall in the Bowline is not a Forecastle song. Um, <laughs> that's a short haul. Uh, Holloway Joe is also a short haul. Um, but Lever Johnny uh, do doesn't have that same uh, tempo and that driving beat that the other songs have. So uh, Santiano is a famous uh, song. have to switch to YouTube. Santiano gained a day away, Santiano. So Santiano actually is, um, both a fork, it could be used as a forecastle song or as a halyard song, um, and and a lot of these songs could be repurposed. Um, to, like if you just like the lyrics, you can actually turn one uh, one sea shanty into another, uh, just based on the rhythm and, and the beat that you sing it with. Santiano came that day away, Santiano. Ah, oh, Santiano came that day all on the plains of Mexico. Mexico, oh, Mexico away, Santiano. Ah, oh, Mexico is a place I know all on the plains of Mexico. Nassau girls ain't got no comb away, Santiano. They combs their hair with the kipper backbone all on the plains of mexico mexico oh mexico away santiano oh, mexico is a place i know all on the plains of mexico and me other skin gals i do adore away santiano all right <laughs> that gives you the idea um so uh one one song that's really um, important is called Lever Johnny. And, uh, wow, look at that. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, the times were hard and the wages low. Lever Johnny, Lever. I guess it's time for us to go. And it's time for us to leave her. Beware these packet ships, I say. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. They'll steal your stores and your clothes away. And it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. Liverpool Pat in his tarpaulin hat. Leave Johnny, leave And Yankee John, the pocket rat. And it's time for us to leave her. She would not wear and she would not stay. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. She shipped great seas both night and day. And it's time for us to leave her. Leave her, Johnny, leave her. All right, so 
uh, what's interesting about this song, uh, and you notice how it doesn't have that same beat, like, <clears throat> dun, 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 right? It's just kind of, it's kind of going, <laughs> right? Uh, the song sounds so sweet for lyrics that are less than sweet. So, yes. Uh, and so, uh, so actually, Hayburn, what do you think the song's about? You think it's not sweet lyrics. What do you think the, uh, what do you think the song's about? Lever, Johnny Lever. Who's the her? How is Kearney's play bar blue on YouTube? This? It's not really blue. It's kind of a periwinkle color. And what are all these things, too? Ah. Home? Mm -mm. They're leaving the ship. So this song is a protest song, and it was traditionally sung on the way back from a voyage. And it was a song, and so the captain couldn't really ban them exactly from singing it. But what happened was the verses were different every time, and what the sailors would sing about were the things they didn't like on the trip. So uh, if they said the food was bad and the wages were low, that's something they were literally complaining about to the captain under the guise of a song. It was a Yelp review of their work. Like, you know how some workplaces do like workplace surveys and you get to uh, measure your employee engagement and, and hand out $10 Amazon gift cards to 10, 10 employees who fill out the survey? <clears throat> Lever Johnny Lever was that, okay? Except, uh, <laughs> except you didn't get a... <laughs> You didn't get an Amazon gift card. If you sang it on the way out, it was considered mutiny. Like it was literally considered mutiny if you sang Lever Johnny Lever while you were on the outgoing part of the trip. It could only be sung usually a couple days before you got back into London or Liverpool or wherever it was you're going from. And and the captain would sort of sit there and just listen like, oh, okay, so they're complaining about the food. All right, maybe we can do something better about that next time. Okay, they're talking about how cold it was. All right, you know. And so the captain would actually sit there and listen. And, and a good captain would use that to figure out what went wrong, you know. And, but the sailors are like, no, we're not mutinying. We're just singing a song, you know. And people just take turns and, and bitch about the, the trip. You know what I mean? So it's not superstition. It's not superstition. You sing that a couple days before the voyage ends. And so if you sing that on the outgoing part... That means you're expecting the trip to be over in a couple days. And if you're at sea, that means the captain's about to get executed or thrown or moored somewhere, you know? So if, you know, if, the, if everyone's like, oh, what a great voyage, and you're like, but we're still in the Atlantic. <laughs> yeah, no, I'll, I'll miss you, Captain. Uh, voyage is coming to an end tomorrow, huh? <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, so Lever Johnny Lever was a song that they would classically sing on the last day or the, the day before as they're heading back into port. And so very, very important song in terms of uh, sea shanties. So uh, there's a lot of topics of sea shanties and um, to categorize them, uh, alcohol, probably, a, you know, probably alcohol, probably women because they're pretty much all male crews, and so there's probably a lot of songs about women, let's say. Um, <clears throat> a lot of songs about voyaging, what they're going to see. Outbound songs oftentimes are very optimistic, like, you know, we're going to see, you know, all this cool stuff, you know, getting people kind of fired up for the for the trip. Um, uh, uh, they would sing about uh, the uh, <clears throat> quality of life on different uh, shipping lines. So the uh, have you guys ever heard "Blow the Man Down"? Do you guys know the sea shanty "Blow the Man Down"? <clears throat> have you heard the SpongeBob theme? I'm so getting demonetized. So that was SpongeBob. And then you have Blow the Man Down. Not all the ad money that I don't get because I don't care. Uh, do, 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 do. Ooh, you got three to do. That's cool. Um, 
Yeah, Alright, let's just do the longest shawns, they're always good. Yeah. Okay, so did you guys hear, they, they were all sailors that shipped on the black ball. Did you guys hear that? Play it again. Um, so the black ball was a, a very famous um, shipping line that ran between Canton and California. And so um, they were famous for switch the screen back over here. Uh, they were famous for actually having the fastest ships in the business. And um, however, the uh, there's a number of songs about how kind of vicious the captains were, right? Like if you weren't uh, working hard enough, they would, you know, use physical violence to encourage you, things like that. So uh, that's, you know, what Blow the Man Down is about. It's uh, uh, originally, I think it was a song about a sailor attacking a policeman and getting knock, knocking him down and getting arrested. But the, the version that everybody knows about is a version that's complaining about life on the black ball line. And so, um, you know, it was, you know, maybe, maybe you can make more money that way because you get paid when you arrive. And if you arrive faster, you get paid faster. But, um, you know, it was be sailors warning each other about work conditions, you know, again, Yelp, Yelp reviews. Um, so, uh, so another, an or another forecastle song would be a whaling song, uh, called, uh, old Maui. And, um, yeah, that version's my favorite there. And so, so whalers, whaling ships would operate out of California, let's say in the mid 1800s, late 1800s. And uh, they would they would be at sea for a long period of time, and um, they might leave San Diego, go around the Alaskan Sea for a while, and then after they'd uh, um, killed enough whales and got battered around by the icy winds and things like that, they would go back to Hawaii. Hawaii was a very popular uh, place for um, ships to re rest and resupply. Right, you want to get fresh food, fresh water. You could eat hardtack, but, eh, you know, hardtack's not very good. And so you can see here's here's San Diego, and there were a lot of whalers based out of San Diego. And you can go up here to to here and and do your do your whaling, and then you could come back to Hawaii rather than going all the way back to San Diego, right? Or you could go over, if you get furs, if you got furs from uh, Alaska, you could take them down to Canton and then sail from Canton to Hawaii. So Hawaii is like, you can see it's like right in the middle of like where all this shipping was taking place. It's one of the reasons why America annexed it, <clears throat> um, you know, over over the objections of the Hawaiian people, right? Um, and so, uh, Old Maui is, of course, about uh, Maui, right? The uh, 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 island right there, which was named after one of the Polynesian gods, one of the most famous Polynesian gods, obviously, by the name of Maui, as portrayed in Moana. Um, so, uh, so rolling down to old Maui is about a whaler crew that is um, done. Like they've been at sea for like six months or whatever, and they're freezing and their the ship's falling apart, and so they're going back to to Maui to rest and resupply, and um, <clears throat> and so it'd be a forecastle song. You, you you can hear there's no, you know, like strong beat like with the other ones. Uh, it's it's just a kind of a beautiful lyrical song, uh, but it would be the topic would be a, a a a going home song, right? So there's some songs you sing when you're leaving, and there's some some songs you sing when you're returning, and so this would be considered a returning song because you sing it when you're on your way back to port, and so there's entirely different sets of songs you sing going out and coming back. Like I said, sea shanties are interesting. Man. It's it's a it's a cool it's a cool. Um, it's a cool thing, and and you know, like I said, to get into to get into sea shanties, like it's pretty easy. Just go to go to a sea shanty night. The San Francisco Maritime Museum has shanty nights when there's not a pandemic, like once a month or something. So just make a trip out there and just sing along with people. It's it's a lot of fun. It's it's in America, like we've lost that sort of tradition that a lot of places have of dance and sing and song, right, and performance. Um, we're, we, you know, we say like if you're not good at 
you know, performing anything, you shouldn't do it, right? Like, it should be your career. You should major in piano if you're going to play piano. And we've lost that sort of, um, we've lost that um, spark, really. Because people used to just get around and sing and dance and have a good time. We don't kind of do that anymore, you know? Um, <laughs> Maui, what can I say except you're welcome. Yeah. <clears throat> so here's, here's rolling down to old Maui. We came to optimize. It's just, I don't know. It's like, it's like a cultural thing. Like uh, a friend of mine was from Trinidad and he's like, yeah, at lunchtime in high school, like people would bust out the drums and start playing drums and people would just start dancing and singing and stuff like that. And it was just part of the, just part of the way of life, you know? And so when he came to San Diego where, where I went to college, um, he's like, why doesn't anyone doing this stuff here? You know? And, and so we went salsa dancing together. Like that was, that was one of the things we did for fun because going out, dancing, music, you know? And and when you do it with your friends, like it's a really interesting thing because like we, we don't do it. And, and so like I, I, sometimes when I sing and, and everyone's just like drinking and they're like, they have their arms around each other and they're just like singing, rolling down to old Maui and stuff like that. Like it's just a really cool experience that you don't really get, you know, anywhere, you yeah. know? So <clears throat> I'll let you know the next time there's an SCA event. I think it's Great Western. This is supposedly going to be on, on Columbus Day, so it's supposedly going to happen. Uh, I don't know if it will or not, but uh, October sixth to eleventh um, at a lake near Bakersfield. So, uh, let's see if they have any pictures. I don't know, there's a lot of music and performances and stuff like that there. It's a lot of fun. So that'll be it. October sixth to. All right, so here is Old Maui. Let me switch over. Change windows. It's a damn tough life full of toil and strife we weathermen undergo. And we don't give a damn when the gale is done how hard the winds did blow. Cause we're homeward bound from the Arctic ground with a good ship taut and free. And we won't give a damn when we drink our rum with the girls of old Maui. Rolling down to old Maui, me boys, rolling down to old Maui. We're homeward bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. Once more we sail with the northerly gale through the ice and wind and rain. Them coconut fronds, them tropical lands we soon shall see again. Six hellish months we've passed away on the cold Kamchatka Sea. But now we're bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. Rolling down to old Maui, me boys, rolling down to old Maui. We're homeward bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. Once more we sail with the northerly gale towards our island home. Our main mast sprung, our whaling done, and we ain't got far to roam. Our stunned soul bones is carried away, what care we for that sound? A living gale is after us, thank God we're homeward bound. Rolling down to old Maui, me boys, rolling down to old Maui. We're homeward bound from the Arctic ground, rolling down to old Maui. How soft. Okay, so what did you guys think of that one? So one thing you might hear uh, in sea shanties a lot is, um, yeah, it's just it's just a very beautiful song. Um, about a bunch of thirsty guys on a boat. I don't know. Um, 
good harmony to in the chorus. Um, so uh, uh, you might hear sometimes in shanties the person say to me or Timmy. Uh, that's uh, that is a way of sort of getting the attention of the people to me, to me. Pay attention to me. Like, listen, right? <clears throat> in South Australia, I was born. Heave away, haul away. South Australia, round Cape Horn. Bound to South Australia. Haul away, you rolling kings. To me, heave away, haul away. So they'll, they'll just interject Timmy into the, into the, uh, into the verses. And it's, it's just a way of like, hey, pay attention, pay attention. You know, that kind of stuff. And so it's not anything to really worry about too much. But if you were wondering why you'd hear Timmy in, in, in these various sea shanties, eh, that's why. Okay, so I'm going to play uh, two more for you guys. Uh, yeah, South Australia is actually uh, one of my favorite ones. And then I'll finish with... Uh, hmm, I'll finish with uh, Roll the Old Chariot by David Coffin, who's one of my uh, like I said, favorite, favoritest shantymen uh, ever. Um, he... Uh, Can I find it? Oh, yeah, here we got, here we got some people, you know, <laughs> working on the, let's see, can I find it? Mm. Aha. Bill Kearney, amazing performance. David Coffin. Thank you. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes. <laughs> My claim to fame. David Coffin said thank you. <laughs> Dude's amazing. Dude's amazing. So, uh, 523, I'll just play two more sea shanties. We'll, we'll call it a night, okay? Uh, so, Randy Dandy. Now, we'll do South Australia, and then we'll do... Um, and then we'll do Roll the Old Chariot along. We have time for three. Okay, let's see. Do a South Australia first. Yep. Hmm. See how this one goes. Guitars? No thanks. Thanks. Yeah, there we go. Johnny Collins is always good. All right, let's switch the screen back over. How did I get to know about shanties again? I don't know, dude. Like, I, I've always been involved. I, I've always been interested in trad music, traditional music. And um, so, like, Irish music. I could do a talk on Irish music if you want. Reels and jigs and spoons and fiddles. And, uh, that could be fun, too. Um, so I've, I've always liked trad music. It's basically what it is. And um, Yeah. And so a, a big part of it was actually me just trying to figure out the rigging of a ship because it was so complicated. And there's so much terminology. Like, I, I just started going down all these rabbit holes. Just, like, trying to figure out how the hell these damn things work. Because I do not understand. And that came about through playing Dungeons & Dragons. So, I don't know. I guess through Dungeons & Dragons, I discovered ships. Because I, I was involved in, like, this nationwide organization that did ship-based Dungeons & Dragons battles. Which was really fun. They would have Lego ships. And you'd, you'd be on a giant board. Like, giant board. Size of a swimming pool. And you'd be moving your your ships around and your characters would be on it and fireballing krakens and stuff like that. It's probably where it came from. That was back in the nineties though. A long time ago. <clears throat> so did a seafaring campaign, had to learn. Yep. 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 All right. So do, 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 screens, screen two and no, not screen two. We want YouTube. There we go. All right. South Australia. Here we go. In South Australia I was born Heave away, all away South Australia is my home We're bound for South Australia All the way you're rolling kings to me Heave away, all away All the way you'll hear me sing We're bound for South Australia Now as I walked out one morning fair Heave away, haul away T'was there I met Miss Nancy Blair We're bound for South Australia Haul away, you rolling kings To me, heave away, haul away 
Pull away, you'll hear me sing. We're bound for South Australia. I shook her up, I shook her down. Heave away, all away. I shook her round and round the town. We're bound for South Australia. All the way, you rolling kings to me. Heave away, all the way. All the way, you'll hear me sing. We're bound for South Australia. There's just one thing that grieves my mind. Heave away, all the way. That's leaving Nancy Blair behind. We're bound for South Australia. All the way, you rolling kings to me. Heave away, all the way. All the way you'll hear me sing, we're bound for South Australia. And when we're walloping off Cape Horn, heave away, all the way you'll wish to God you'd never been born. We're bound for South Australia. All the way you're rolling, kings to me, heave away, all the way, all the way you'll hear me sing. We're bound for South Australia. I wish I was on Australia's strand. Heave away, all away, with a bottle of whiskey in me hand. We're bound for South Australia. All the way you're rolling, kings to me. Heave away, all away, all away you'll hear me sing. We're bound for South Australia. All right, one last one, and we will call it a day. I'm, I just screenshotted the number of people online uh, to see who left. <laughs> All right, last one is my favorite dude, David Coffin, Roll the Old Chariot. Uh, this is at uh, a um, this is at a uh, <clears throat> uh, folk maritime folk festival. So uh, every year in um, uh, Portsmouth on the East Coast. They have a, a, a sea shanty festival there, and uh, this dude is, is just like the, the master of it all. You've seen this in lecture? Yeah, I, I, I've probably played this before. Okay, let me mute myself again. All right. Oh, we'd be all right if the wind was in our sails. So we'd be all right if the wind was in our sails. So we'd be all Town wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, the night on the town wouldn't do us any harm. Oh, the night on the town wouldn't do us any harm. And we'll all
All right. That's it, everyone. So, uh, yeah, that was actually an old uh, slave spiritual. Um, there was actually a lot of interplay between um, the sailors and the slaves because the slaves would load the ships. And so the sailors would take songs and share songs and things like that. And so um, there's a lot of interplay between different cultures and people of races and things like that as well in, in sea shanties. So that's it. Um, yeah, that is it for uh, the sea shanty night. I hope you guys had fun. Everybody who is here at the end, you get your workshop attendance counted. People that were not should have been here. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, it's posted here on the, the workshop channel. Um, it's, a, it's a great passion of mine. I love them. And uh, I can you know, put together a playlist or something for you guys if you want. No. I'll put it on the uh, I'll put it on the music channel. Okay. So that's it. That's all, guys. Uh, thanks a lot.